In the last video, we talked about why bus stops are important and why should we take care of them. In this video, let's talk about how can we improve them. Like we said in the last video, making transit become more convenient and accessible is the key to opening the door to better ridership. In order to make it become more convenient, three factors should be reached, not just through transit alone. Better land use, better community design, and better transit policy all contribute to better public transit. Sadly, cities and planners tend to simply look at a better transit policy, trapping them in the endless cycle of minuscule transit improvements that don't solve anything at all. With land use improvements, cities need to move away from the separate zoning laws and practices that planners of the 1950s loved. Since residentials are separated from other activities, it is nearly impossible to commute from one's home to their essential locations by public transit or any alternatives that is shorter than driving. Mixed use zoning with amenities accessible on non-automobile trips is highly recommended. The higher number of high-rise housing Compact buildings containing sufficient spaces for dwellings and workspaces would decrease the need for automobiles, making more people walk and thus improving the accessibility and safety to transit. Back alleys should be treated as a pedestrian shortcut. They need better lighting systems to improve safety while accessing the bus stops from homes. Regarding community design, bus stops should be placed on the far side, meaning behind an intersection, to facilitate a safer crossing for pedestrians since they now cross the street behind the buses. The sidewalk should also be raised to meet the level of the bus floor in order to create better access for people with disabilities and seniors. In commercial areas, exiting a bus stop should be followed right by entering a store, not by crossing huge parking lots in front of buildings. Improving the walk to the bus stop will help reduce the hesitancy among riders when they think about taking transit for their commutes. With the current situation of winter and heavy snowfall among many cities in Canada, the most practical and fundamental way is to improve the sidewalks. They should be widened and plowed thoroughly in winter to allow a safe and comfortable walk with no icy spots or heavy snow that create harsh conditions. The widened sidewalks will also help improve pedestrian traffic flow and create distance between people, which is crucial considering the need for social distancing. Widened sidewalks will reduce the chance of a sidewalk blocking the pedestrian traffic and allow for more bus stop infrastructure like shelters, bike parking, and bus bulbs to be installed. These features will sharply increase the safety and welcoming of the bus stops. They will ensure personal safety and visibility for both riders and drivers. Besides sidewalks, if back alleys are treated as pedestrian shortcuts, they are counted as a path and therefore need to be treated as a sidewalk as well. The more convenient the infrastructure, the more people will choose to use it, no matter if the mode of commute is by car, train or on foot. With transit policies, bus stops should be located in an area that people within 400 meters on foot from it can access easily. Bus stops in grid streets have a higher connectivity than suburban streets since they can connect a larger portion of houses and facilitate a shorter perceived walking distance for the riders. The information displayed at a bus stop must be clear and easy to understand. Route numbers, destinations, schedule and route maps should be the must-have components of a bus stop. This actually has been noted in the National Association of City Transportation Officials Transit Design Guide. Shelters must be equipped with light and benches. They should also be kept clean, free of trash, and be wondering whose job this is. It is not just the city's responsibility, it is your responsibility when using the system as well. With the harsh winter conditions of Canadian cities, many have built shelters with on-demand heat or sealed shelters. The cost, explicit and implicit, for such improvements can be substantial, but they are crucial in improving riders' experiences. We are seeing changes to the waiting environment of transit systems, but things are far from perfect. Attractive bus stops will attract more riders and improve accessibility, convenience and connectivity, which lead to further positive outcomes in reducing emissions, congestions and public health improvement. Developments are expensive and will take a long time to demonstrate a notifiable change, but they are important in promoting alternatives to the automobiles as cities develop.